Keir Starmer is surely a dead man walking. His days are numbered. There are more damning revelations about Beer Gate that have probably signed his political death warrant. Of course, he's done this all to himself. If Keir Starmer hadn't made such a big deal out of Partygate and called for Boris Johnson to resign and Rishi Sunak for being slapped with a fixed penalty notice, then I don't think anyone would seriously be calling for him to stand down now. So, in a way, like many of his voters, he decided life would be much easier if he was unemployed. Here are the latest nails in Sir Keir's coffin, and thankfully it comes in the form of a blow-by-blow -blow schedule of events that prove the Durham sesh was pre-planned. Firstly, Labour officials always knew that Angela Rayner was in attendance. She'd referred to in the memo as AR. So it wasn't an honest mistake that Keir Starmer and Labour denied that she was there. It looks a lot like an absolutely massive lie. Secondly, Actual police officers could be key witnesses. So four close protection officers are named in this document, including one who travelled with him from Hull to Durham. Thirdly, the order of events quite clearly shows that Sir Keir could have eaten at his hotel on his own. And there was no need for a massive curry and a boatload of booze. In fact, and this is the real kicker, OK, the curry and beer was pre-arranged. The running order states, quote, dinner in Miners Hall with Mary Foy. I mean, I think I'd have sent my ticket back personally. Anyway, that's a pre-arranged dinner, isn't it? 80 minutes was set aside for the meal. Hardly the pause that Sir Keir tried to claim. But of course, this was just a quick nibble to eat, wasn't it? Between work events, wasn't it, Keir? Is that right? Ah, well, it turns out that that looks like a lie as well. Because according to the order of events, there was no work scheduled to take place after the meal. I now, for once... I'm on the side of Diane Abbott. She says that Sir Keir should resign if he's handed a fixed penalty notice. Let's not beat around the bush here. A woman who can't even put her own shoes on or do basic maths can see that Keir should stand down. It's hard to see how he won't be given a fixed penalty notice. I mean, compare travelling to Durham for a pre-arranged meal and booze up with someone presenting you with a bit of cake in your own office. Literally, the only thing Sir Keir had going for him before this was that he was a man of integrity, that he was honest. Well, he isn't, is he? And all this talk of him being forensic, well, he's hardly been forensic when it comes to the emails in his inbox that prove he is, in my opinion, a disingenuous little charlatan. He's so boring that he could bring a tear to a glass eye. I actually feel sorry for his close protection officer because he had to travel a couple of hours on a train with him. I think I'd stick my head out of the window and hope to hit a low-hanging branch. So... Of course, it's quite ironic, isn't it, that it will probably be an actual party that brings Keir down. But this is just terrible politics. He's shown that he may well be a half-decent barrister, although, to be fair, I think there's probably a few women who encountered a certain BBC celebrity who might disagree with that, but he's terrible at politics. He's backed himself into a corner. If he receives a fixed penalty notice, he has to resign. He set the rules himself. The question is, will he?